We have the rest of the week nine matchups during our first Bipocalypse week this year. We're getting into a lot of news and covering last night's game that destroyed my soul. Make sure you like this video, comment, leave us a review of how things are going for your fantasy season, and enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, November 4th, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. The. We're the one. The Deucers in the building. hey <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good and stuff. And we have a busy day. There's a lot to talk about, including... A, surpri- a surprisingly interesting football game. Jason. Yes. You had you were on this podcast earlier in the week proclaiming if there was just if you could get a team to keep up with the Eagles so they actually have to do something in the second half. Mm-hmm. You got your wish. I didn't know it would be the Texans. We didn't, yeah. But were you happy? I was extremely unhappy, Mike. <laughs> extremely Dude, unhappy. Careful what you wish for, everybody. Uh, apparently, I should not wish for that <laughs> the single week that I am playing the person with A.J. Brown and Dallas Goddard, who received all of the fruits <laughs> from the basket of delicious treats that Jalen Hurts was uh, handing out. So um, it was not a good uh, game for me, for yours truly, um, but at least I also faced Damian Pierce and had the great Eagles defense <laughs> that could not stop him. I'm fine. I'm fine. Good stuff. Everything's okay. <laughs> everything is everything. You can treat yeah. <laughs> Everything is good and good and fine. Uh, yeah, it's just the NFL relentlessly reminds us that if you don't bring your best, anyone can beat anybody. And the Texans, they put up a fight. Made it interesting. I mean, they lost by twelve. Yeah, <laughs> like through halftime, they had a they had a good game going. Kind of fell apart there. Yeah, and part but part of that was yeah that turnover, right? I mean, shortening the field, getting them that extra um, opportunity, and then yeah, the game the game was over, and uh, the Eagles remain undefeated. The Texans won six and one, and we move on. I mean, Damian Pierce is a legitimately great running back. It was one of those things you could see in preseason pretty quickly. You hoped. I think the only fear was like, okay, you know, they, they're not as forcefully committed to him as somebody that drafts a running back in the first round would be. But at least your eyeballs said, okay, maybe the the coach should trust this guy to carry the rock, relentlessly hard runner, played a difficult defense and looked great. And, and, and I mentioned him because – Moving forward, I think it's that trust where you can say, look, Damian Pierce can be part of the backbone of a team. Absolutely, and and he is matchup proof. Uh, the, the Texans have committed to him in a way. I mean, you're talking about 27 carries in a loss. against a great defense in a loss. Even when you're trailing, they still gave him the ball, and he is their best chance at moving the ball. Like, I don't even blame them, you, you know. When you're the Falcons and you're doing that and you're like, why? Okay, if you're down multiple scores and you've got Kyle Pitts and you've got this great outside rookie Drake London, like you have weapons. But in this situation, their best chance to move the ball is Damian Pierce. So if you've got him, he is locked in as a top 10 running back rest of season. Today's show, we're going to talk about some news and injury updates. We have the fantasy forecast part two going through six more matchups, the fantasy face off, the wheel of shame. And it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. 
I think I'm going to start a new tradition right here, right now. Ooh. It's Foot Clan Friday, which means that tradition. we we have a weekly giveaway to a supporter at jointhefoot.com, and I am look. I've been I've been hoarding the uh, the ability to announce the winner, and I'm going to start distributing this to a producer each week. So I see. Do you see what I mean? Well, this specific week, is, yeah. It's it's a, it's an interesting. Oh, name. is the name more difficult to pronounce? Yeah, for I, for uh, for us poor dumb Americans, yes. So um, the Borgogan is our editor in chief, so he oh, seems yeah. like he should be trusted. A uh, hundred dollar gift card, master of linguistics. A hundred dollar gift card to fantasychamps.com. Kyle, who is our winner this week? The one, the only, Sadish Nadkarni. Congratulations! There it is. Well done. How did that feel? You just gave somebody a, a, a wonderful prize. It felt good. It felt like I was announcing like a spelling bee. Okay. Yeah, th- and that felt good. Next announcing week, a spelling bee. Next week, I hope it's more prices right. Ooh. You know, like, come on oh, down. No. Absolutely. Get get the hype machine going. This is a $100 gift card to Fantasy Champs. That's yeah. And now we're, we're getting towards playoffs. Call your shot. We'll Just give, go get your trophy right now. Yeah, we'll give the Al and the Judge an opportunity yeah. to see if he can top the spelling bee level. Congratulations. Of the Borgogian. If, Congrats. If Kyle, Kyle. Yeah. If Kyle botched your name, we apologize yeah. for him. That's yeah. right. Kyle. We have to do that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> On to the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. The Ravens, mm. Rashad Bateman, wah, is wah. undergoing surgery for a list frank injury his season is over deshaun jackson 52 year old deshaun jackson will be <laughs> active on monday night football and then we are in uh limbo town with mark andrews and gus edwards being a ravens fantasy manager is a i mean even if you have lamar you're it's, not that's not great you're not like thrilled about the outcomes here where demarcus no. robinson is your number one target i mean honestly deshaun jackson dare you. if duvernay yeah <laughs> if, if deshaun jackson has the juice left this is a really good offense for him and obviously they brought him along off the practice squad a little slower he had to get back into football shape he he is available on dynasty waivers so that it's a name worth picking up in your in your much deeper leagues to to wait and see duvernay is a very fast athletic uh, wide receiver that you know is worth picking up as well. Yeah, it's you know Mike, what do you think happens with Mr. Mark Andrews and Gus Edwards this week? My guess would be that Mark Andrews will play and Gus Edwards will not. I but noticed that's just, that's, like you've been doing the bye week juggle with the running backs and yeah. I was looking at your roster this morning and you have you have DeAndre Swift where which we have an update on him. He he did return to practice, but he said he cannot promise he'll be at 100% this year. Uh, and I see Gus Edwards on your bench, and I don't know if you were sitting there going, like, I'm going to gamble on Monday night or I'm going to make other arrangements. The, I mean, the, I have my one other arrangement, uh, which is Caleb Huntley, uh, because running backs, it's tough in the streets on the waiver wire. That's a bad arrangement. Well, I, it felt like an okay arrangement until they announced that Cordero Patterson is in his window to return. So should Patterson return on Sunday, then it is just an atrocious backup plan. And is that when you hit the streets again and you're looking around for... Yes. Okay. That, that Something will have to be done then. Michael Thomas placed on IR. His season is over. Yeah. Michael, and Michael he might Thomas. make it back this year. It's not to say that uh, that you know the, it's a season. It's oh no, he, no, it's, no it's that's right. He's got over. surgery. That's right. Yeah. He's he's done. He he does he's, say he he's always toast. Does. Oh, good oh, one. I liked it. No, he no, didn't like it. No, uh, he says he always bounces back though. <laughs> does he though? I mean, on uh, given the timeline, we all bounce back, right? Not on a long <laughs> enough timeline, Mike. <laughs> that's true. The final bounce gets everybody. <laughs> the, f- the final <laughs> bounce. He did not bounce back. Oh, I mean, he had. It's been a while, man. Michael Thomas, you got to go back to 2019. He turns 30 in March. This is this is man. curtains, right? I think it's mostly curtains. I mean, you could he could transition into a late career Jarvis Landry fantasy value, but that's his his ceiling at this point. 
Chris Olave is the 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 song, the dance. He's everything in New Orleans moving forward. Um, yeah, this is this is uh, the curtains. I like that expression. Austin Eckler added to the injury report with an abdomen injury. Got in a mm. limited practice. We don't know more than that, right? I mean, Brooksy, have you heard anything about uh, Mr. Eckler that you can – anything good you can tell Jason who just sighed with the <laughs> sigh of a broken man? We'll be watching for more. Thanks, bud. Appreciate it. The, the whisperings were that it was not a big deal. Just something <laughs> – yeah. So, like just a little little tweak ski in practice, so they have to put it on the report, but he'll be fine. That's Austin Eckler. We'll, we'll see. Austin that's Eckler is the has, running back one, right? Yes, yeah. he is the running back one right now. And I will say this in his favor, which is he played through a lot of injuries last year. He was missing practices, and he is a tough guy that will absolutely play injured and play well injured. That being said, to say something against his favor is – this is this is a Thursday crop up on the injury report. It would feel so much better. Like if my, it was a Wednesday rest day. My two running backs right now, which are a great combo to have, are Austin Eckler and Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry missed practice Thursday. Missed Wednesday and Thursday, but I, I that's it's almost just a good rest, man. It's just a, it's almost better when you when you start on Wednesday and you could say that this could be rest. If you practice on Wednesday and then you crop up with an injury on Thursday, that is a new injury. It has to be for a reason. Right. Yeah. Uh, Josh Palmer, even though he's cleared concussion protocol, Coach Brandon Staley said he's not willing to say that he will absolutely be available on uh, – What is happening? What are we doing? Yeah, what, what are we doing here? What, are, what, what is are, happening? He's practicing in full. He's cleared the protocol. You desperately need him. Maybe, maybe play the guy. Uh, uh, this is not coming. Is he your is, start of the week? I mean, it, well, he's my start of the week. He's also my replacement for losing Mike Williams that I picked up to play alongside Austin Eckler and Derrick Henry. I am really having a go this week. Uh, it's just it's confusing because we don't know what's going on. Of with the information we have is they said he's out. Of, he's out of the protocol. He's practicing. Maybe the coach is a, a little too afraid to venture into guarantees around concussions. It, maybe, maybe. Uh, Keenan Allen didn't practice. He's not going to play. No. Donald Parham and it added to the injury report with a hamstring injury. Gerald Everett is, it's like the, uh, <laughs> he's like, uh, what Will Smith in the house. Yes. <laughs> Just looking around Kicking saying like, okay, no Palmer, maybe no, no Keenan, no Mike Williams. I mean, Deandre Carter, a dart throw Cooper cup returned to a limited practice. Jonathan Taylor didn't practice again due to the ankle injury. He looks extremely questionable for Sunday. Darren Waller limited. We don't know when we're getting Waller back. I think when he's back, you just play him. Most most teams, yes. Uh, if he comes back this week, Mike, or you have Gerald Everett on your roster, you probably go play, Everett. I would go Everett. Yeah. Corey Davis ruled out. This is uh, this is really uh, good news for Garrett Wilson for Denzel Garrett, Mims for <laughs> yes for Denzel Mims. But Garrett Wilson looks like he's a very good play this week. Corey Davis. I said ruled out. Damian Harris did not practice Wednesday, Thursday due to illness, so he is very questionable. And then DeAndre Swift not being 100%, Mike. You have DeAndre Swift. What are your thoughts on this report? Is this a way of saying, um, like when I read it, I, I heard Jamal Williams will be really involved for the rest of the season, and it's going to be annoying. Yeah, that, that that's a good takeaway there. The It's just it's about adjusting your expectations when – uh, if you like me traded for DeAndre Swift back, you know, a couple weeks ago, gambling on the return from the injury, it was I. We might have a, a top ten running back here, and we're just getting a slight discount because of the injury. Buying an injury dip is always comes with high risk, and the everything that's going on between the low usage on Sunday, the talk after not practicing immediately on Wednesday, limited on Thursday. There's, I think there is a. He's probably like fifty-fifty to even play this weekend with everything swirling around him. And even if he does, you're gonna get low usage yet again. Probably just passing down work. So it it is which he can succeed in. He can still be a useful fantasy player, but you're not getting top ten. You're hoping you're getting a top twenty-four. Couple quick other updates. No Jonathan Taylor on Friday's practice either. He is a very, very doubtful at he's this not point. Playing. And then the Panthers running back Chuba Hubbard not at practice after being limited the last two days. So he seems like he's going to miss. And Deontay Foreman will continue to 
Uh, get everything. Get it all. Yep. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Foot Clan, just so you know that we know, injuries are the worst. The worst. Mm -hmm. They are, I mean, it's all outside of your control, just uh, other than putting players in your lineups based on probabilities. It's all outside your control, but the injuries, they feel the worst of all because it can happen at any moment to any player at any time during practice, during the game. Uh, Sitting in a chair. You can. Jason. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, you can have your entire season submarined, no fault of your own, simply by being the guy that had Hollywood Brown on his roster or – you know, one of these players that gets knocked out, and 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 we feel it. We feel it too. And and that's accepting that you don't control it all is a good step towards not having um, as many emotional issues during the season. If you're a fantasy player, because uh, it happens, it happens to everybody. It does. Yesterday we covered the Chargers, Falcons, Dolphins, Bears, Panthers, Bengals, the Cat Bowl. Uh, Packers, the undersized cats. Yeah, the uh, tiny, well, one little, of them. tiny little baby panthers, apparently. <laughs> Mike thinks that they're like po pocket-sized at I'm this point. I'm still thinking about this. Like, 150 pounds? Yeah, and you're just, your mind's blown. Yeah. Most, uh, I don't know if you knew this, most house cats are black panthers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Packers, Lions, Colts, Patriots, Bills, Jets. We also covered those games. So if you want to hear our breakdowns, um, click on yesterday's episode. Six games remaining, starting with the 6-1 and one Minnesota Vikings taking on the 4-4 four and four Washington Commanders. Uh, I think this game's going to be pretty good. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Minnesota minus three. The over-under is 43 and a half. Revenge game for Mr. Kirk. You like that, Cousins? Could be. There's, does he have that in his heart to take revenge? I don't know. I don't know either. He does. Uh, he gets pumped up. I mean, this guy gets, you saw it last week with uh, one of his touchdown passes. Minnesota's won five in a row. They've only lost to the Eagles. Washington has won three in a row. And Carson Wentz is chilling on the sidelines. So, um, which is why they've won three he's, in a row. He's doing great work. The over-under here, 43 and a half. DraftKings has the sportsbook line at Minnesota minus three on the road. Uh, Kirk Cousins. He's a quarterback 12 on the year right now, fourth in red zone attempts. You have seen the difference on this offense, having uh, Mike Zimmer depart and, um, you know, a, a brighter mind on the offensive yes. side of the football. Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, those players are locked and don't need a lot of discussion. But I would like your guys' thoughts on the startability of Cousins versus players like Justin Fields this week versus Tua, and then your thoughts on like Thielen and then Hawkinson in his first week in Minnesota. Hawkinson in his first week in Minnesota is someone that I would be hesitant to play. You don't know. Um, you know, there's a lot more to learn as a tight end uh, coming in. That being said, uh, he's had a lot of practice in his career of new systems in the NFL. Uh, so this is, you know, he talked about that, the, the fact that it's just new terminology, but he's used to learning new systems. Uh, so if I could avoid him, uh, I would. There's, you know, I would. I would play uh, Robert Tunyon over. Would you play Hawkinson. Evan Ingram? I would play Evan Ingram okay. over over Hawkinson. But I don't blame you if you don't want to roster two tight ends on a bipocalypse. You might not be able to, so you could throw him in. As far as Kirk Cousins goes, I think he's a really good streamer, but he's a low end quarterback one. I would not play him above Justin Fields, who's been on fire. Uh, he is my quarterback twelve right now. I'd play him above. Uh, someone like Trevor Lawrence. I think if things go right for him, it could be good. Washington, 27th right now in uh, schedule adjusted. So they have given up some points. But Adam Thielen, Mike, you comfortable with Adam Thielen? The, it was, the problem for Thielen is, like last week he had the, I think he got, what was it, a temporary knee injury? Not temporary. Like yeah, he, he went down for a He got a hurt. He went down. It, it didn't look great. But Still he, had seven targets. But he did come back into the game, so that gives you some hope. But n you know that he is limited. But since week two, he's averaging nearly eight targets a game. The Manders, 30th against wide receivers if you adjust for schedule. So I think that Kirk Cus or Adam Thielen is in as that flex type of a play who 
At any moment, you know that Thielen's good for a touchdown. Currently, for what it's worth, now that we're getting through the year, he is the wide receiver 36 on the season. That sounds about right. Yep. Um, and they don't – they haven't had – oh, no, they have had their bye weeks. So, um, no real top-end performances from him, but he can certainly help you not lose a week. Yes, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. On the other side, we're not going to get Jahan Dotson back. Terry McLaurin was my start of the week on yesterday's show because Taylor Heineke loves throwing him the football yep. as a means of success in the offense, which it is. What do you do with the running backs? It is a sketchy matchup. The, the, the Vikings are ninth if you adjust for schedule. They're sixth over the past six weeks. So, like, to me, Brian Robinson, maybe you fall into the end zone. That That's always the chance for Brian Robinson because that seems to be his role. But... Antonio Gibson is interesting. He's gotten more receiving work lately, and one of the a low key injury. JD McKissick, go ahead and hit the drop, please. Thank you. Uh, did not practice Wednesday or Thursday. If JD McKissick is not active, like the five target floor for Antonio Gibson, <laughs> that's the okay, five target that makes floor. Sense. Seems like. That's in play for Gibbs. Uh, I will may not... smile right now. He's so uh, he's just so proud of himself. I will. I will say Good this, work. Mike. Like Thanks. I was, I was paying attention to snap counts for McKissick because when Robinson came back, like he was down at sixteen percent against Green Bay. He went back up to thirty six percent last week in the uh, eternal deficit against Indianapolis. But and then, no, I mean it does lock in the floor for Gibson's passing work. Yeah, they, if this on the ground, it shouldn't be a good game for Gibson or Robinson. But you're just you're hoping that Gibbs, who has a uh, receiving touchdown, I believe, in back to back games now, and just that that role is not going to Brian Robinson. That and Gibson started last week. It's would you it's play interesting. Garrett Wilson or Antonio Gibson in a flex position? Th this comes down to whether Ooh. J D McKissick plays. If J D McKissick is out, I would play Antonio Gibson. I think he becomes a good asset because he will receive all of the receiving work out of the backfield. And that's just really valuable for fantasy. If if JD McKissick plays and is active, that you know, then you're in a three way timeshare against a good rush defense that I don't love. Then at that point, I'm questioning. Uh, you know, I would I think I would rather have AJ Dillon than Antonio Gibson. The Las Vegas Raiders at two and five take on the two and six Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, confusing season for both of these teams. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Las Vegas minus one and a half on the road. The over under is forty eight. Uh, they're they're very weird teams, both for fantasy and in reality. It it feels like the aura around Jacksonville is that there is a positive momentum. The record is not reflective of that. Uh, they've been more competitive in games. They've given games away in the fourth quarter. They have more relevant fantasy players than they've had in the past. Mike, you put you made Christian Kirk your start of the week this week because you know those first. You know he can have a big week. He was the wide receiver six through the first three weeks of the year, but it's been a while. He's the wide receiver 42 since then. Yeah, but but still getting the targets, you know. And the Raiders' defense, so benevolent. Yes, over the last three weeks, you know, chilling at about 24% of Jacksonville's targets, and, and the Raiders are just, they're bad across the board. So, you know, it It is interesting to have a, a two-win team that, you're, you nailed it, Andy. If like, it's just, if they're weird, like, are they good? Are they bad? I still don't know. The record indicates that they're bad, but I don't I don't know that Which they're bad. Which two-win team yeah. are you talking about here? I'm talking about the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Raiders are, are not good to me. But on the Jacksonville side, Lawrence is a very capable streamer this week. ETN has skyrocketed. Like He's just an absolute monster who's getting all the volume, hitting a big run every week. Travis ETN is the running back what rest of the season? Ooh, six. Okay. Yeah, he's I mean, he's definitely not top tier. Who would you rather have, but he's Damian Pierce one. or Travis Etienne? I see them very similar. Uh, I take oh. Etienne. Man, I would have to look at the schedule. That's how close those guys are to me. Yeah, they, I guess they are pretty close. Uh, but Kirk is in. Zay Jones. It, when six teams are on by, Zay Jones can definitely fill in for you. And Evan Ingram is a top twelve tight end who's been seeing more volume the last couple weeks. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and read the uh, comment that Kyle left for Evan Ingram in the sure. dark. What, uh, go ahead. What is it? In a dark world with tons of uncertainty, <laughs> Evan Ingram might be the hero you need. Yeah. Let's go. Debbie, Evan Ingram is Evan Ingram. 
Yeah. That's one of his best and worst qualities. But the tight end, so over the last month, he's been the tight end 8, 20, 9, and 4. He was the tight end 4 against the Denver Broncos. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I watched that game. He, he scored a touchdown. Still got in his mandatory two drops. Oh, of course. I mean, because that's just part of Yeah, don't, don't worry character. about that. Josh Jacobs should bounce back this week. Jacksonville's defense, 27th against running backs. Um, over the past six weeks, they're 27th against running backs. It's it's a nice matchup for Jacobs, and he's kind of the only – he's really the only piece that's had consistent, you know, chain-moving success on this offense. Devontae Adams back in practice, full strength. He should have a much better week as well. Yeah. Uh, and then – and I'm not really starting – like, Hunter Renfro has been ridiculously bad. He's, he's not in play. He's been so bad. He is not. I mean, the reality is Matt Collins is the wide receiver, too. It's 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 not Hunter Renfro for this team. He's kind of been worked out of being relevant for fantasy. So, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, great plays. Darren Waller, if he's active, you can play. Otherwise, I, I don't think I'm messing with any any Raiders. And, and if you're saying Carr or Lawrence, I would rather have Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, I, I would too. I would too. Um, all right, quick break. Back with the Cardinal game. All right, the five and three Seattle Seahawks go to Arizona to take on the three and five Arizona Cardinals. DraftKings Sportsbook line Arizona minus two. The over under is forty nine and a half. A nice palindrome game. Yes, nice. it is. Uh, Cardinals are 0-5 in their last five NFC West games. Good news, they play NFC West teams the next three weeks. Uh, this is a rematch from the snooze fest we got in week six. We were expecting that to be a shootout. But Seattle's defense has stepped it up in recent weeks. Seattle won that game 19-9 to uh, on the back of Jason Myers. On the foot of Jason Myers, but yes. There you go. Um, Thank you. The, Sorry about the, that. The kicking is actually pretty important to remember when you go back to that last game. The Cardinals kicker was injured. They did not have uh, any confidence, so they had several drives in that game where they moved the ball on the Seahawks uh, pretty well, and then they would get down, fourth down. They would go for it, get stuffed. That's how they ended up with only nine points. That was pre-DeAndre Hopkins, and that was on the road. So it, it will be interesting to see if you can get – what the hope was last time uh, coming to fruition with some of these players actually healthy and back for the Cardinals, you also have a Cardinals defense that has been better than most people think that could be really bad this week depending on the health of Buda Baker. Uh, Buda Baker's been missing practice, unsure whether he's going to go, and he, as he goes, the Cardinals defense goes. And as someone who picked up the Cardinals to play at home in this game, uh -oh. That's a terrifying thing to hear, <laughs> uh, because they've been they've been scoring a lot of fantasy points. The Cardinals yeah, defense. Sure. Uh, just so you guys know, since Hopkins returned, his pace is uh, 187 receptions for 2,200 yards. Yeah, if you stashed Hopkins through the suspension, you are being rewarded. He's been incredible and is a lock. The Cardinals running back room has been very uh, difficult to have confidence in right now. What? Yeah. Even if James Conner returned to this game, That's which like, he's been limited in the last two practices. The last 22 practices. The last 22 practices. That's worst case scenario to me. Is, is it, him coming back. Is James, for fantasy purposes, Yeah, because you don't, you don't they, want to play him, Eno, you know, at all yeah, if, the, if he comes back. The last three weeks, no Conner, Eno Benjamin, 17 opportunities per week. Daryl Williams will be on the IR. Uh, Keontae Ingram, if, if James Conner misses, it's going to be Eno and Keontae Ingram, which – that will be Eno getting the bulk of the work. But if James Conner is actually back, it's a time show that I have no idea which way it would it can go. Because I I can spin the narrative to myself that well James Conner James Conner has missed so much time, limited practices. They might use Eno Benjamin as the primary guy, and then it's well James Conner's the the guy with the money. He's the starter from the beginning of the year. He goes right back into his starting job, of course, because he's James Conner. So it's it's extremely difficult what to do here. It it almost feels like if Conner is back, you sit both. You sit both, which on a freaking week with six buys may not even be an op a possible for your team. 
So it's uh, yeah. I, it's a it's a disaster, and I don't I don't really have actionable advice here because I don't want to play either of them if Connor's out. I, I think the actionable advice is if you can bench them, bench them, assuming Connor is back. If you can't, it would be Connor first. You would play him a, ahead of Eno Benjamin for touchdown upside, um, it, and I would probably just bench Eno outright if Connor is back. That Seattle defense fifth best against wide receivers over the last three weeks. Um, they held Kyler Murray to a very low score, uh, but you hope Arizona can keep things going at home. Zach Ertz, my start of the week at the tight end position. Rondale Moore is in play. Like right now, you know, if you had Josh Palmer and he gets sat down, Rondale Moore is a nice pivot. Sure. If you had to decide between Rondale and Romeo Dobbs, one of our biggest start sit questions on the website, who do you go with? I would go with Dobbs because of the matchup and the, the fact that he's used outside Dobbs against Detroit. Uh, I would expect more there. The Seattle Seahawks defense has been good, but that is not knocking. I, I, I think Dobbs is an okay play this week. I think Rondale is an okay play this week. What we've seen from him is that he is now the clear-cut wide receiver two in two wide receiver sets. He's on the field. He's on the outside. When they moved to three last week, they moved him into the slot where he's much better. So the utilization of Rondale has given me confidence that he can be used. It's just not a great matchup, I don't think. He's a little bit of the we don't have running backs, so let's run through the air strategy for Arizona as well. On the uh, the Seattle side, Kenneth Walker is a, a roster lock. Is Geno Smith a streamable candidate for you? Is that come down to Buda Baker or I think either way you can stream Geno Smith. He has been very good through two more touchdowns last week. I mean, his he's not one of those guys that's going to go out there and usually just win you a week. He's not going to go out and put up a Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen type of performance um, uh, on the on the reg. You know, last week he wasn't a quarterback one, but he had a good uh, you know he had a good week, two touchdowns, and you've got DK Metcalf getting healthier and Tyler Lockett getting healthier as they've been struggling over the last month with each with their own injuries any um other discussions on this game you guys want to get into uh the mm -hmm. tight ends always do well against both of these teams so Andy obviously Zach Ertz is easy uh, the Fant Disley decision is like I I would not play them in redraft but in uh you know a DraftKings lineup they are very very affordable and you could flip a coin as to which one of those guys you, you would like. 28 targets, I believe, on the season for Noah Fant. 22 for Will Disley. Disley has been the one that slides into the end zone, I think, more if, often. If you want to use last week to help you break the tie, they both had two targets. Well, the, yeah, the maybe tie that breaks, breaks them <laughs> right out of my line. The tiebreaker for me was the, the fact that last – time that these two teams played you saw Fant with seven targets six receptions for 45 yards the Rams are three and four and they are traveling to take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who are three and five surprising records for these two franchises the DraftKings Sportsbook line Tampa minus three the over under is 42 and a half one of these teams is done done over season is over after this week that's crazy yeah, I mean, yeah, your chances. I don't know of, if I'd bury the Rams, but I think I. I don't know if I'd bury and, either in those divisions. I, I the divisions that's are that's the hard part. The divisions are much. It's much kinder for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, if they go to three and six, I guess their season isn't over. But I, I do think three, three and five for the Rams with the upgrades that the Niners have made. Yeah, it, it feels tough. Yeah, to try to sneak a wild card out there or something. Um. Neither team can run the football. I was I was looking at Leonard Fournette's numbers on the ground because we are we we live for the dump truck Fournette. Yeah, got to back it up. But like like I would be stashing Rashad White harder than ever right now. Leonard Fournette's yards per carry um, since week one: two point seven, two point nine, negative one, four, three, two point four, two point seven, negative one. Yes, <laughs> that's a. That's... I mean he. He That's went, impressive. And I know it's offensive line related, but it's also like a, a massive drop. Like he's 1.1 1, 1. 1 yard lower than last year. Um, Rashad White has more juice. He does have more juice, but it, it, to speak to the offensive line, he's averaging three yards a carry. It's not like right. he's – this offensive line is just not allowing them to run the ball, which is why 
the dump truck and the dump offs, that's that's where you're going to get fantasy value in the running game or or from a running back is in the passing game uh, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, and and uh, Fournette was he did get into the end zone last week, which was helpful. The week before was his really bad week against Carolina. Neither team can run, so they throw the ball a ton. And it hasn't Good worked run. out the way that they, they they've wanted it to. You know, it's easy to say, okay, the Rams can't rush the rush the passer, so Brady will be fine. Well, he's faced some teams that can't rush the passer, and he's not been fine. So, what what are you doing with the quarterback position in this game? Like, are you are you finding like lower tier options to pivot off of Brady for? I expect both of these defenses to be better than both of these offenses. Okay. And so, if that happens, I am looking elsewhere. I would I would. I would rather play Trevor Lawrence um, than Matthew Stafford or Tom Brady this week. I have, it, it just in a crazy coincidence, on my main dynasty roster, I have Tom Brady, Kirk Cousins, and Justin Fields. And as of right now, Justin Fields is starting for that roster. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. I mean, the, it's been really, it's difficult because you look at the weapons, you know, Julio's playing, he scored last week, Chris Godwin, he's playing, Mike Evans is out there. And it's hard to see those three weapons and say Brady doesn't get it done, but he hasn't gotten it done. So um, the yardage has been there. It's just been when when the field shrinks and they get into the yeah. red zone, he has not been able to punch in touchdowns. Yeah, Chris Godwin with zero touchdowns. It's absurd. That's Is he none. really a zero? That's a goose. I thought he had one. Wow. No, none. What no. a loser. He dreams of being Michael Pittman with one touchdown. But Tom Brady did wear a Chris Godwin shirt at the most recent press conference. Okay. Well, that's maybe maybe he's, he's just trying to pump his mans up. Yeah, I mean, it, w is this in lieu of a breakfast? Like, did Godwin say, hey, do you want to go to breakfast? This, and he's like, this is, no, but I'll wear a shirt of it's, you. It's a new metric that the DFS boys are working on, the T-shirt the narrative. Okay. So, is this to, similar to the Vermont storyline? Yes. yes. To kind be, of the intangibles? To be fair. Yeah, you can't quantify it. Just let it happen right. and accept it. This is like the third time this year we've Science. seen the uh, the quarterback wear the wide receiver jersey or or t shirt. It has worked out on yes. the other weeks. Yes. Not <laughs> and the other reason it could work out is the talent, right? Of Godwin. I mean, there's a little bit of that. Yeah. Uh, are Are you really uh, Cooper Cup? If he plays, you play him, and he's gonna yeah. he's gonna play. But you look beyond Cooper Cup in this game. On the Rams side, is this the like? Is this the like least amount of Rams players you've ever wanted to play in a, cer a certain week? I don't know how you could put a running back out there. Um, you, you've got a team in the Buccaneers that is good against the run, and you've got a team in the Rams that is so bad at running the ball, and it's now a 22-back committee. That right. You, you don't <laughs> have any idea how many players are going to be involved. Uh, you got you know, the Brown Rivers. You got the Brown, yes, Brown Rivers, uh, which is slightly worse than P Rivers from a couple <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Daryl Henderson, um, maybe K Kyrie, yeah, maybe or, Kyrie, or, or Kyrie. Kyrie. Yeah. Ky oh, no. uh, maybe Kyron Williams. Oh no, yeah. no, 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 not that guy. Cam Akers is, he is available to come back at to running back right now because <laughs> yeah. yeah. he's not playing his sport. Um, wow. Whoop, whoop. So yeah, you're just you're off the running backs here. I mean, I, I, I think Allen Robinson if, is tied with Metcalf for the uh, high, uh, most amount of end zone targets. How about how about a shot? Yeah, I think I think Allen Robinson is give it a, a go is a flex option this week. And obviously, if Cooper Cup is gone, they are going to be throwing the ball around. And I think Allen Robinson probably needs to be started if Cup is is out. And maybe you take a DFS dart throw on a Van Jefferson if if Cup is gone. I tried to send Mike the fantasy hitman yes. the, the D. Yes, you uh, tried. Greg Dulcich. I tried to send him Greg, Greg Dulcich, and he said, because like Higby's had two really rotten weeks yes. um, under three fantasy points, and Mike said, nay, I shall not. I love the Higby. Yeah, I still believe in him. Last week, you had the, the injury right at the beginning of the game that looked bad, but he came back in. But here are the behind-the-scenes metrics. Uh, Tyler Higby ran 15 routes and was targeted – six times that's a 40 percent target per route run so that he is when he's on the field he is still involved in that if you're just looking at the fantasy finish of the last two weeks it, I, I can i can see people wanting to bail out 
but I still believe that Higby is a big part of this offense, and he was very close. Just it, some called it a drop. Some uh, I thought it looked like a bad throw, but should that connection have happened, he would have had a forty or fifty yard touchdown. Uh, one of the attributes of our player profiles on the website is the consistency score. He's sitting at forty one point two, which is a C grade in consistency. That is the percentage of games exceeding eight points, which is the kind of playability line that we set for tight ends. You can see those consistency scores on all the player profiles for everybody on the website, uh, thefantasyfootballers.com. The Tennessee Titans are 5-2, and two, and they get the privilege of heading to Arrowhead and take on the Kansas City Chiefs, who are 5-2. and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Kansas City. What? Minus 12.5. <laughs> Dad, come on. Wait, no, wait, it, wait. Makes, it makes perfect sense. Wait, wait, wait. This is quarterback-related. Is it okay? It's quarterback okay, yeah, related. Yeah, I forgot Tannehill. Yeah, this still is kinda... this is about Tannehill probably not playing. Okay. Yes, that, okay. I just was worried that, that the lines sense. might have moved. No, with it didn't the Henry move stuff. due to Derrick Henry. No. Okay, good. The over under is forty five, but that does give Tennessee only sixteen points. Which you know that Malik Willis, you can win a ball game when you hand the when you hand it to Henry against Houston and let him run for his two hundred. But it's going to be a lot harder to do that against the Kansas City Chiefs. For multiple reasons. I mean, for one, you're going to give up a lot more points. I mean, the implied point total to Kansas City is 28.8 at home. Uh, I, I, the, the Tennessee Titans defense is not going to be able to contain uh, Kansas City. So Malik is going to have to try to throw the football, and that's where things are going to go sideways. Malik Willis started the entire game last week, and he did not throw for 100 passing yards. He did not throw for 90 passing yards he did not throw for 80 passing yards or 70 or can even i get 60. a 60 Wait, can i get what? a 50 uh you can get a 50 you can get a 50 that's such good news that he was so good that he threw for 55! 10 attempts for 55 yards yeah but at least he's mobile and can run and got 12 yards on the ground but i mean the truth is you didn't need it no you, you didn't you, you had derrick henry uh getting 10 yards of freaking carry man. breaking his foot now the Tennessee's giving them the ball too much. Tennessee's beaten them the last two times in the regular season. That's that's why I was so shocked about the twelve and a half. Yeah, but I forgot about the Tannehill situation. We don't know. I mean, he didn't. Tannehill didn't practice on Thursday. It's not a, a guarantee he doesn't play. I'm sure he wants to play in this ball game. It's a prime time game. It's an important game. They're they're two five win teams, but right now it looks like a boat race for the Chiefs because I don't think Malik Willis can keep up throwing. The, part of it's the weapons, right? You don't have the kinds of weapons in the offense, pass-catching-wise, that can really help Malik Willis be great. Like Traylon Burks with the body size, to be able to go up and save him from a, uh, an errant throw, you've got Robert Woods. If Malik Willis plays, I don't think they're going to throw the ball much. I really no. don't. Even if they're down, I think you're going to see what you know the, the Texans and the Falcons have been doing, which is just our best way to score on the Chiefs and keep up with them is another 30 carries for Derrick Henry. So yeah, hopefully shorten that's the, shorten the ball game. Hopefully that's why the Wednesday yep. and Thursday rest is happening for this later game in the week is to get such a big workload that Derrick Henry already received last week get him some rest for another monstrous workload against a team that I do not think can stop. I mean we they're not as bad as the Texans run defense, but they are they're not far off. They they do not have a very good run defense. Um, hashtag only Henry is what we're saying for the Tennessee side of the football. On the Chiefs side, Jason, you are the highest right now on Isaiah Pacheco this week against Tennessee. You have him at RB19. Um, you know, it's exciting to have a young and uh, bursty running back compared to what, what they've the had. juice. So – some upside here for Pacheco. Yeah, I the the reason look the Titans run defense is very good, and so the the matchup might not appear that perfect for Pacheco. But coming out of the bye, I am very excited to see what Andy Reid can do with Pacheco. I want to give him a boost of uh, or fantasy managers a boost of confidence that I you know that uh, Pacheco is to me still well ahead of Clyde Edwards-Helaire and Jarek McKinnon this week if I have to start one of those three players. What do you do with the uh, Kadarius Tony situation? You sneak him into your lineup hoping that they find ways to use him in this game, or is this more of a wait and see? I mean, what kind of glory do you want? <laughs> the glory play is calling your shot on Kadarius Tony. They'll have some packages for him. The, the nice thing is they traded for him on a bye week where they can involve him a little bit more. It's, it's not quite the same as, um, you know, when a running back shows up 
on an airplane the day before a game, you know, when, when Christian McCaffrey was doing that and got eight carries. I think he'll be involved enough to take a shot. You know, you, you again, coming off the bye with Andy Reid, I, I'm just excited to see what he can come up with with these weapons. You know that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to score a lot of points. The problem is you just don't know where they're coming from outside of Kelsey. Yeah, my new tight end. Shut up. Uh, no, this is a big announcement for the Foot Clan because I, I, it played a big part. We've been in this situation with Kyle Pitts. If I bench him, he's great. Right. And so people have been saying, hey, will you bench him for me? Will you bench him for me? I said, yeah, I'll trade him away. I'll just trade him away. I'll get you great Kyle Pitts rest of season. You are a benevolent yeah, podcast I, man. I traded him away for you. Thank you. So, um, what a giver. Foot Clan, prepare yourself because – all of the hopes and dreams for Kyle Pitts about to just completely happen. That's Superstar Marcus Mariota, high pass attempts. Here we go. Does that mean bad news for Travis Kelsey, the Reaper? No, I don't think I'm I'm going to be able to handle uh, injuring Kelsey. He's okay. a Greek god. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, all right, uh, play Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Monday Night Football, Baltimore, 5-3, and three, New Orleans, 3-5. and five, The DraftKings Sportsbook line here. Baltimore minus just 2.5. The over-under is 48. I think some concerns about the weapons for Lamar Jackson, the availability of Mark Andrews are weighing into that line because uh, – and then the game's in New Orleans, but I don't know, two and a half? That's a pretty close game. Here's the thing, Lamar. If I could uh, – Mr. Yeah, Lamar. Yeah, if you want to speak to him, that's fine. I, uh, this, is, uh, this is what I need to share. The last couple of weeks, we've seen you in the pocket holding the ball in, in that area much longer than you usually do. Run. Just run. You don't. If you're without Andrews, you got no one on this field. You do not trust anyone. They're all spies. <laughs> Keep the ball away from them and rush for a hundred plus yards. Maybe throw a couple touchdowns here, or there. But but mostly run. And those could come to Isaiah Likely stepping in for Mark Andrews. The real uh, interesting situation, not one that I I know the answer to, is if Andrews is active, how much do they? take off of his plate is he a a 100 percent snap guy does decoy. isaiah likely Ugh. go out and help him um in his return and the the baltimore ravens do have the bye week next week uh so is this one of those situations where the ravens say hey we can we think we can manage this game without andrews let's let him get two I weeks think, of rest i think if you are in a situation where you're panicking and you have a bad option at tight end but you have Isaiah Likely, and you're wanting clarity, and you might not get it. I think you can still play him. Like, I think you can just play Isaiah Likely at your tight end position. Rashad you're Bateman, saying even if Mark Andrews plays. I, I am, and I, I think you will be okay there. I think Isaiah Likely will be part of the game plan. Rashad Bateman is gone. Isaiah Likely is one of their best mismatches. Demarcus Robinson cannot be the central, you know, pass-catching option. Like, Isaiah Likely is going to be involved. They they run two tight ends out there, even if Andrews is is um uh is back. So I, I just want to give you so like I would I would take my shot on it. I would. Over what though? I mean I I, I understand No no further questions. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I, I let give me some names. I mean Okay, uh, would you play Dawson Knox or yes, Isaiah? I would, Likely? I would I would be willing to give Isaiah Likely the shot there. What if you had T J Hawkinson who they just traded? Isaiah for? Likely. Really? Yeah. Okay. What yeah. about what about the hero that we're all needing right now, Evan Ingram? I have a contractual obligation yeah, okay. to what not, if what if I Rob, Robert Tunyon? Well, no, no, no. What if I, his name was Schmevin Schmangrum? Hmm. Good question. Shme would, Shmevin, I would start. Okay. Just, yeah. just, Shmevin, check, just check. Schmevin is in there. Um, Isaiah likely did have a pretty good week too, where he had five targets. Uh, he could be out there for fifty percent of the snaps. They're going to have to rebuild the offense and use their advantages that they have, and he's one of them. Um, Duvernay isn't a traditional outside wide receiver in any respect. So, he's very fast. Uh, I'm just saying for the Lamar Jackson truthers, you want more likely out there. Yes, I agree. Especially around the red zone. Gus Edwards, what do you do? Can he's, you Drake? Do you play him? Yeah. I don't, uh, Gus Edwards, I, I would be surprised if he starts at all. If Gus Edwards is out, then I think Kenyon Drake is a startable asset. He's going to get enough work. Uh, they are favored to win, and so you can take a shot uh, on Kenyon Drake during the bipocalypse. If Gus is active, I don't play any of them. 
I worry about mm, reaggravation okay. for Gus Edwards, and I certainly don't start Kenyon Drake um, if he's not the dude there. I mean, again, with the bye week, it would be pretty surprising to me if Gus plays. The bye week coming up? Yeah. Yep. Uh, five touchdowns over the last five games for Lamar Jackson. Five total. Yeah, let's get some more. Not each. The run- not each game. <laughs> the, the Because the running backs keep stealing them. Uh, Stop that. I do think that Demarcus Robinson is an emergency start for your roster. Sure. Demarcus or Khalif Raymond? Demarcus. Yeah, Demarcus. Um, and then if you were putting Duvernay out there, Darnell Mooney or Devin Duvernay? Ooh. Uh, I think Duvernay's upside is higher. But just, just because of, like, the, the more more likely to get a big touchdown or, you know, like a 30-plus would be Duvernay to me. Okay. Uh, Alvin Kamara, please play him. Yep. Chris Olave. Yep. Please play him. Yep. Michael Thomas now on IR. Jarvis Landry probably not going to play. And um, Andy Dalton is the quarterback of the New Orleans Saints, which is why we're talking about the three and five New Orleans Saints. They have some quarterback shuffling that they've been doing. Yeah, I would not play Andy Dalton in this matchup. Uh, Taysom Hill is obviously the same as he is every single week, a very low floor, very high ceiling tight end start that is worthy of being in lineups couple injury updates. Alan Lazard now moved to a game time decision. Yeah, what what? What? The guy I thought he was practicing. Uh this is uh from what I understand they did this for you. They, they did. It was just this is not great. He they they called up uh the Cardinals said, "What are we what are you doing with James Conner over there? <laughs> you is he been practicing for weeks?" Yeah. We can hey, do that? Yeah, we could just not play him. Game time decision. Okay. Da- Damian Harris is not practicing. Yeah, he's still sick. Ramondre is going to be great again. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, Ramondre and Deontay Foreman for one of our you know teams in our in our league of record that just has a magical touch. Yep. Uh, Russell Gage ruled out. Yep. So Lazard, thankfully, is disengage. He, Lazard is the the morning games or the early games, I should say. So you'll know if he's out there. <sighs> it depends on what your other options are. If you want to pivot away, but Lazard is in a, such a good spot this week. It's time for the faceoff. Fantasy faceoff presented by DraftKings. Whee! Really enjoyed Mike in the robber outfit. Busted last week. I enjoyed it not as much as you. And, uh, I'm on Boston. a hot. I'm on a hot streak now. I have not been chained for two weeks. <laughs> That's a hot streak, by the way. Um, fortunately, Jason is our wheel of shame winner. This is yes, I won yeah, big uh, winner, big winner for the second time this year. I am uh, the winner of costumes. So you ready to spin it? Give me that wheel. Wheel of shame. It'll give me the spin. The wheel is spinning. We have a uh, rainy day. Geezer. Oompa Loompa. What is this? Oh, okay. And, and caveman. The caveman is coming through. Okay. Is this, right, does yeah. he just have to dress up like Hagrid again? Or? Uh, let's find well, out. Because yeah, he loves beards. Oh, yeah. So the, the beard is going on. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so that's a tight fit there. <laughs> It's a really that, tight fit. Oh my way, to, way to take one for the team. What is this thing made for a baby? <laughs> is this a baby costume? <laughs> oh, my, where does this go? Right there is good. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, this thing is so tight. Okay, so now the wig is being <laughs> the, the 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 wig is being put on. Excellent work. Oh man, and there's your, there's your <laughs> this is good. Okay, this is awful. <laughs> I mean, it looks great, but I can't even move my lips. This thing is so tight. I'm gonna you, die. You ready to? You ready to break out your lineup for this week? Oh yeah, that's. Um, I have a lot of analysis on my lineup this week, Jay. I'm sorry. Uh, About 15 minutes per player. Well, let's talk quarterbacks. Uh, this I week, I think I found the mouth hole. <laughs> it is very tight, but I can speak through it. Yeah, now. It sound, you sound uh, great. Good work. You sound great. Hmm. <gasps> 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 Uh, yeah, give us your uh, your caveman quarterback. My caveman quarterback is Justin Fields at 5,300 so that I can afford to put some other good 
players in my lineup. I wonder if there is crossover here. Yes, I have Justin Fields. Oh, wow, I do too. Yep. Wow. It's 5,300 in this matchup against the Miami Dolphins. It's so that just knocks the quarterback right off the faceoff. Yep. Yep. Doesn't matter if Justin so Fields cheap. good. He's so cheap. He's so cheap. Yeah. I, I imagine he's the most rostered cash quarterback this week. Well, then let's turn to your caveman running backs. Well, this is where I spent up yes. for my savings. I have Austin Eckler Ooh, with all of his- With his abdomen injury. With his abdomen injury, yes. And Travis Etienne. Ooh. Uh, Travis Etienne, 6,300. Mm. So I feel like he is uh, mispriced. All right. I have Austin Eckler at oh. 8,800. Uh, but I went with Aaron Jones Ooh, against Detroit yeah, at 7,400. Yeah, yeah. 7,400? Oh, He's spent, pretty expensive. You spent yeah. up. Wow. So how much is Eckler? 8800 Yeah, that's He was a by lot. far oh the highest price. Goodness. Okay. That'll be interesting. Uh, I also have Travis Etienne at 6300 and oh, That frightens me. Uh, and I, I don't know what you guys are doing. Kenneth Walker is still 6200 K-Dubs, get him in there. He's going to torch the Arizona Cardinals. Ken Walker is an unstoppable force right now. He should be in our lineups. <laughs> is he your flex, Andy? He's not. He's not mine either. Tremendous. Whoops. <laughs> How about those wide receivers? Uh, I also spent up here a little bit. This is uh, I really love my first two. Tyreek Hill, he's just been wow. Un you, you got Hill in unstoppable. He's eighty five hundred, um, but I I just want all of the, the jammed him in there full PPR. And Amon Ross St. Brown sitting at sixty six hundred in a good matchup. Uh, and then my last wide receiver here at fifty one hundred is Josh Palmer. Uh oh, it, my Who's your pivot? my pivot will be Garrett Wilson. Okay. All right, I um, I went with the uh, the the counterpart to Tyreek Hill. I have Jalen Waddle back in there. He treated me so nicely last week, and, and he was cheaper. Much cheaper, yeah, yeah, seventy four hundred for Jalen Waddle, and uh, Jalen Waddle has cleared the what <laughs> sixty seven and a half receiving line mark in every game with Tua. How's the uh, how's the bone comb working out over there? The bone comb <laughs> is real good. My other wide receivers, I went with DeAndre Hopkins at okay. 7,900. Who was your oh, you and Jalen Waddle, Waddle okay. and DeAndre Hopkins. And then my third, uh, I spent way, way down, Khalif Raymond at 4,000. So I have DeAndre Hopkins at 7,900. His O on uh, DraftKings Sportsbook, he's sitting at six and a half receptions, but he's seen 14 and 13 targets oh, it's in, his, been beautiful. in his two games. Like, 7,900 is probably still underpriced for what Hopkins can do. I have Amon Ross St. Brown. No Hawkinson. That price is still very good. And we have a uh, – I may have to pivot here because I didn't realize he was going to be a game-time decision. Uh, but I have Alan Lazard who's sitting at 6,000. Uh, I thought practicing meant he would play. Okay. Jason, let's finish it up with your tight end flex and defense. Well, these are real cheap. I mean, <laughs> i got a lot of good players <laughs> elsewhere. My tight end is – Noah Fant against the Arizona Cardinals. Noah fantastic. He is only 2,900. Uh, went back and forth whether him or Disley. We'll see if I chose poorly or not. Zay Jones at 4,100 uh, against oh, yeah. the Raiders. Always. And the Carolina Panthers hoping to get some sacks on Joe Burrow at 2,300. Okay. I, uh, I went with Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst is my tight end at 3,600. I went with the Schmevin Schmingrum. <laughs> as my flex you went with Schmevin Schmingram 3300 he was better than the wideouts at that at that price point wow. and I spent way up with Eckler Jones Hopkins and Waddle and I went with the Panthers because yeah. I had to <laughs> I had no choice I had no I was choice out of money I was out of money uh so the other thing that will blow up my rosters I have Josh Palmer as well at 5100 so two two uh Characters here in my cast that you love them game time decisions. Yeah, yeah, apparently, uh, I still believe in Tyler Higby at thirty seven hundred. If you have a limited Cooper Cup, that could be even more targets for Higby. And then I went with the Colts against the Patriots. Ramondre is a scary man. What's the price on that? They're twenty seven hundred. Okay, but so you Mac, have to spend a little more. But Mac Jones hasn't looked very good, and the Colts defense, Shaq Leonard is back, is actually pretty stout. All right, that was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now and use the promo code BALLERS <clears> to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That is the code BALLERS, Ballers. only at DraftKings Sportsbook. How do you feel about that, Jason? Oh, me happy. <laughs> good, good. Well, we'll shut this thing down. 
Thank you for joining us on today's episode of the podcast. Thank you to the producers <laughs> for everything you do, you beautiful people over there. And uh, enjoy the weekend. See you, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.